Welcome back. In this video, we're talking about right angle trigonometry. And so far, really, we've been talking about right angle trigonometry like the whole time. <clears throat> but we're going to spend a little extra time looking at some various triangles and applying the trig functions to them and digging even a little bit deeper into the relationship between the trig functions. So let's get to it. Here we've got right triangle definitions of trig functions. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't really need, well, I guess I can use these diagrams. We've talked about this uh, in the previous video. If you look at the right hand diagram, you see that there's a theta in here by angle A. And I've been calling that the reference angle. So when you're inside a triangle, and you're, especially when you're on the XY coordinate plane, this angle that's inside the triangle nearest the origin is what I've been calling the reference angle. And across from or opposite that angle is what we call the opposite side, and it has a length. Notice the capital A that's over here and the lowercase a that's over here. In my videos, we're almost always going to do that. The capital will be the angle measure, and the lowercase of that same letter will be the corresponding side length that is opposite that angle. So we've got our opposite side length, in this case is lowercase a, our adjacent side length, the length of the side that's next to our reference angle, in this case is b, and the hypotenuse is c. And I've been calling my opposite side length and labeling it with a capital O, my adjacent side length with a capital A, and the hypotenuse labeling it with a capital H. And the next thing that we see sort of streaking across the middle of our page here are these capital letters in different colors. The S stands for sine, the C stands for cosine, and the T stands for tangent. We already talked about the fact that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. There's a mnemonic that many people use in order to remember those relationships. And if you string all these letters together, if I could just scoot them together and turn them into one word, maybe, it would look like Soka Toa. So here's the S O So K A K T O A for Toa. So we have So Ka Toa. And that's one way that people remember how to build those different fractions that we were looking at in the previous section. Similar triangles. <clears throat> Similar triangles have the same angle measures as one another. So in the bottom left corner of every one of these triangles, there's a little theta, and that theta is indeed the same number of degrees or radians each time that you see the theta. There's a right angle in the bottom right corner of all of those triangles, and by subtraction from 180, the uppermost angle in all those triangles are the same as each other. Notice that if I take the tangent of theta in our first diagram, we have opposite over adjacent, which is equal to 3 over 2. In the second diagram, opposite over adjacent is 6 over 4, but that reduces to 3 over 2. In the third triangle, opposite over adjacent is 1.5 over 1. If I multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, I get 3 over 2. And the same thing happens in this last triangle. We've got 4, if my pencil will work, 4.5 over 3. And we would have to divide the numerator and denominator by 1.5, and we would get 3 over 2. So the tangent function here is giving us the same output value because the angle measure is the same. But that angle measure could be inside of a variety of different triangles. The triangles, however, are just different, um, different versions of each other. They're sort of scaled up or scaled down versions of one another, okay? That's what allows me to get away with what you saw in the previous video where I was using a hypotenuse of 2 instead of a hypotenuse of 1, which is what I was supposed to be using in the unit circle, because I just took everything and multiplied it by 2. 
but none of my angle measures changed, just like in these four triangles, the angle measures aren't changing. I'm just scaling the triangles up and down. Here we're being asked to evaluate all six trig functions. We've done some of this already, so let's go through this one fairly quickly. We've got the sine of our theta value. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to, oh no, we don't know what the opposite side length is. How are we going to figure that out? We can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's label these with a lowercase a, a lowercase b, and a lowercase c. Notice that I used the lowercase version of the capitals that corresponded to the angle measures. So lowercase a is across from capital A, lowercase b across from capital B, and the same for c. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, we don't know what our a value is, so we'll leave the a squared there, plus b squared is 15 squared, c squared is 17 squared. Still don't know what a squared is. I happen to know that 15 squared is 225. 17 squared is 289. I'm going to pretend that that's correct, and then when I do my subtraction, we're going to confirm that that's correct. Now let's subtract 225 from both sides to find that a squared is equal to 9 minus 5 is 4, 8 minus 2 is 6. Hey, 64, that's a perfect square. Let's square root both sides to find that a is equal to 8. All right, so we've got an a value. <clears throat> which is now our opposite side length. So we can evaluate the sine function. We've got eight over 17. Cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, is 15 over 17. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite side length was eight, adjacent side length is 15 because the 15 is next to my angle measure, the eight was opposite or across from my angle measure. And I'm hearing a little background noise. Let me pause and I will be right back. All right, uh, so those are our three sort of initial trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. All we have to do is take the reciprocal of those results and we will have our, have our other three functions. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant, CSC, of theta equals 17 over 8. That's the reciprocal. Reciprocal of cosine is secant, SEC, of theta, 17 over 15. And finally, cotan of theta is equal to 15 over 8. You'll notice that, and we'll talk about this more later, but we were talking about the domain and the range of the sine and cosine functions in the previous video. And here you'll see that eight over 17 is between negative and positive one. This is also between negative and positive one because the range of the sine and cosine functions went from negative to positive one. In this particular case, <clears throat> the tangent function is also between positive and negative one. It won't always be that way. The tangent function sometimes returns a value that's larger than one or less than negative one. I don't know why that came into my mind at the moment, but it did, there it is. All right, so those are the six results based on this triangle. Uh, I'm going to try to have this video be a little bit shorter than the previous one, so let's just do one example of each of these processes. Here we're being asked to find the missing side. And this is where you have to start getting a little creative. What we see in this problem is an angle measure, a known angle measure, a known side length, and then an unknown side length. Where are they? And when I say where are they, I mean where are they relative to the angle that we're working with? That's a highlighter, which is fine. This is what I wanted to use, there we go. The unknown side length is across from 
or opposite of the angle measure. So we have an angle, we have an opposite side length, maybe I'll even say that this is equal to O, and we have a given hypotenuse that's across from our 90 degree angle. So I've got an angle and an opposite and a hypotenuse. What trig function have we worked with that, that uh, helps us build this sort of ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse? It's the sine function. So, S-O-H, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's just start by framing that up. The sine of an angle measure is found by taking the opposite side length and dividing it by the hypotenuse. That's the, the skeleton of it. Now let's fill in what we know. We've got the sine of 34 degrees is equal to, we don't know the opposite side length, they're telling us that it's represented by this lowercase a, we're dividing that by the known hypotenuse of 13, and we only have one unknown in our equation now, which is great, we can solve for one unknown. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 13. I'll put a little note that says we're multiplying both sides by 13. And we now have 13 times the sine of 34 degrees is equal to lowercase a. Now we haven't done any calculator work yet, so let's have a first go at using the calculator. It's in here somewhere. There it is. I'm going to use the same calculator that I use in my college algebra class, which is the TI-30XA. And we can make this a little larger so you can see what I'm doing. I think you can probably handle it. But so there's one initial thing that we need to do other than turning on the calculator. And that's we need to make sure that the calculator is in the correct mode. And on this calculator, <clears throat> there's, well, on the output screen, this is a little tough to see, but right up here, it says DRG. Does it say what that says? No, it says DEG, which stands for degree, certainly. Uh, however, there's also a button right here that says DRG. And if you push that button, you'll see the change on my screen. It doesn't say DEG anymore for degrees. Now it says RAD for radians. And if I hit my button again, now it says GRAD. I don't know what that means. And then I hit the button again and it takes me back to degrees. Now in this problem, we're working with degrees. It says 34 degrees is our angle measure. So I'm gonna leave my calculator in degree mode. Sometimes we end up working with a graphing calculator. This is the TI 84 plus. And if I switch it on, and clean the crumbs off of the screen. Uh, it's a little more difficult maybe to tell what mode you're in initially. Although actually at the top of the screen it says radian. So that's a problem because this problem is not working with radians. So I'm going to hit my mode button on my keyboard which is right up here near the top and I get this menu and then I'm going to scroll down a couple of times to where it says radian, and then I'm gonna move over to where it says degrees, and then I'm gonna hit enter, which is some, I don't know where the enter button is. Oh, it's down in the bottom right corner. So now degree is highlighted on my screen, and I can hit second quit, second quit, and I'm back on my home screen, and now up here at the top, it does say degree, so we're in degree mode. So always when we're working with trig functions on our calculator, it's a good idea to take a moment and make sure that you're in the correct mode. All right, so now on this calculator, I'm basically gonna solve the left-hand side of our equation. It's kind of backwards the way that you type it in. I'm gonna type in the 34 first, and then I'm gonna hit the sign button, which is up here, sign. And now I've got this really gnarly looking decimal that's on here, and I'm gonna leave it on the screen and I'm gonna hit the times symbol so let's multiply, and then I'll type in 13, and I will hit equals, <clears throat> and what I've got on my screen now is 7.2695, blah, 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 blah. And I think this problem said something about, let's get me out of the way. 
Mm, I don't see any specific instructions on how many decimal places we want, so we'll just do whatever we want. But when we're doing our homework, we'll make sure to read the instructions on the screen very carefully to make sure we type in the correct number of requested decimal places. All right, so that is our missing side, seven point, approximately 7.269. And we got a little exposure to the calculator. Nice. What else? Similar problem here. There's the angle measure. I see the opposite side is what we're looking for. And in this case, the adjacent side is what we're being given. So what trig function uses the opposite and the adjacent side length? That's the tangent function. So you've got the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. In this case, in this problem, we have the tangent of 61 degrees is equal to, we don't know the opposite side length, it's the lowercase a, but the adjacent to this time is 10. Multiply both sides by 10 and get yourself a solution. I'll punch it in real quick so that you can do it also and check your work against mine. I'm typing in the 61, I hit the tangent button, I multiply it by 10, and I've got 18.040. All right. What else, what else? I like that we only have eight pages of notes this time instead of like 13 or whatever it was in the last set. Hey, you recognize these triangles, except they're, they've are they traded places, okay? The 45, 45, 90 is on the left-hand side of the, uh, the page this time, <clears throat> and the 30, 60, 90 is on the right. Uh, we saw all of these numbers when I was writing them up previously. You are also now aware that I like to multiply this whole equation or this uh, left-hand triangle by the square root of two. I like to square it up so that this becomes a two and this becomes a root two and this becomes a root two. All I did was multiply all the side lengths by two. Shape of the triangle is not gonna change. Angle measures aren't gonna change. I'm just blowing it up a little bit. The triangle that's on the right, you'll notice that it already has a hypotenuse of two. Fantastic. Love that. Why not have a little consistency? Okay. We're being asked to fill in this table. And there's a nice little reminder at the top of the table that 30 degrees is the same thing as pi over 6 radians. 45 and 60 are pi over 4 and pi over 3 respectively. Okay, that's nice. You, This is a good exercise for you. Okay. Use these triangles. So let's fill in the first column and we'll do that together. And then I'm just going to write in answers for you in the other two columns. So maybe you pause it and try to fill those in on your own. And then you can push play and see what I got for solutions. But in the first column, we're looking at the 30 degree angle. So I'm up here. Let's switch colors. I'm up here and I want the sine of 30. Now that's opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite or across from, divided by the hypotenuse. So it's one half. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the side length next to, divided by the hypotenuse. So it's root three over two. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite the 30 degrees, next to the 30 degrees, one over root three. If you rationalize, it's root three over three. So you go through and use the 45, 45, 90 triangle while you're working with the 45 degree measure. Come back to this right hand triangle and go through the process using the 60 as your reference angle and see what you get for solutions to the rest of these. Go ahead and pause now, try to fill in your table on your own and then push play again and see what I get for answers. See you in a second. Okay, I didn't actually pause. I'm hoping you just paused. Uh, all right, so let me fill these in. Sine of 45 is one over the square root of two, which is equal to root two over two. Cosine, same thing, equals root two over two. Tangent opposite over adjacent is one over one, which is one. The 60 degree angle, 
sine of 60, opposite over hypotenuse, that's root 3 over 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 over 2. Opposite over adjacent is root 3 over 1, which equals the square root of 3. So hopefully you got what I got, and then we can keep going. It's a good exercise, though, to just see if you can get more and more efficient at evaluating those, because you're going to be doing a lot of that. For example, like right here. Now, on the previous page, you had diagrams that were given to you already. Remember that on your speed quiz, you need to be able to draw those diagrams on your own. Now, these three angle measures, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, those are all in the first quadrant, which is nice. And there's the same angle measures there. It won't, that won't always be the case, okay? You're definitely going to run into, of course, there's none of them here. You will run into angle measures that are not in the first quadrant but good to get practice working with those and making sure you're comfortable identifying opposites, adjacents, and so on, building those fractions. <clears throat> so here we have 6 times the tangent of pi over 4, which we just saw was equal to 1, plus the sine of pi over 3, which is, oh, it's, a, you know, it's just two days back from winter break. I got to get my head back in the game. The sine of pi over 3 is uh, that's across from the 60 degree angle, which means we're going to have the long leg, which is the root 3, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the 2. All right, there we go, root 3 over 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the secant of pi over 6. Now, the secant of pi over 6 is the reciprocal of the cosine of pi over 6. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse for pi over 6. So the adjacent side is going to be the root 3 and the hypotenuse is going to be the 2 again. So I've just done all of that in my head. That's terrible. That's not very helpful for you. Let's draw these diagrams like we're doing the speed quiz. First of all, tangent of pi over 4. Pi over 4, halfway up the first quadrant. Hypotenuse of 2 is what I really like to use with legs of root 2 and root 2. Tangent pi over 4 is opposite over adjacent, which is root 2 over root 2, which is equal to 1. All right, I did that one correctly in my head. Hopefully I got the other two also. The sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is high in the first quadrant. It's way up here. Drop the altitude, right angle, hypotenuse of 2, long leg is root 3, short leg is 1. We're evaluating the sine function. Sine of pi over 3 is, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to, the opposite leg is root 3, the hypotenuse is 2. I got that one right, that makes me happy. Let's switch back to red, and we're going to evaluate the secant of pi over 6. Let's draw the pi over 6, which is low in the first quadrant. Drop the altitude, right angle, hypotenuse of 2, short leg is 1, long leg is root 3 in a 30-60-90 triangle. And we've got the secant of pi over 6. Now, as I said, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to write adjacent under hypotenuse. Uh, cosine. Oh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah, okay, so we're good. Hypotenuse is 2. Oh, see there, I did make a mistake. I didn't take the reciprocal. Hypotenuse is 2, and the adjacent side length is indeed the root 3. So we need to make an adjustment up here. That should say 2 over root 3. I failed to take the reciprocal. Erase 2 over square root of 3. Oh, that's really nice because we get some reducing here and we get to reduce this way. What you really have there is 2 root 3 over 2 root 3. And anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So that really says 6 times 1 plus 1. So this is equal to 6 plus 1, which is 7. And our final answer is 7. A good illustration of the fact that even though I'm really good at this stuff, although I'm rusty because I've just come off of winter break, um, 
Doing this stuff in your head isn't a great idea. I love drawing these little diagrams, and you, you saw how fast I did that. Keep up with your practice of drawing these diagrams. Make sure that you get really good at uh, your really good with your understanding of the ratio and relationships between the side lengths on those 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. And all of a sudden, it's going to be faster for you to write out the process than to do it in your head. And you're more likely to get right answers. So keep practicing your diagrams. Very similar problem. And then we're into our co-function identities. So the co-function identities, I feel like are, oh, there's a couple of probably politically incorrect ways I could describe the co-function identities. <clears throat> Let's say they don't get a lot of attention. I don't, I don't even find them all that valuable. Not like I really do math for a living, but if I did, I don't even know if I would use these all that often. But let's write them out, okay? Um, the sine of pi over 2, which is equivalent to 90 degrees, minus theta is equal to the cosine of theta. Why are these called the co-function identities? What do you think sine's co-function is? Maybe cosine? Ah, see what I did there? Okay, now let's see if we can do a little sort of double negative on that one. The cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to, what do you think cosine's co-function is? It's sine. So what this is allowing us to do is, and you can see it in the, the problem that's peeking out at us there, for example, four, that theta value is a 35 degree angle. So whether you think of these as pi over two, or if you're in degrees, we'll be working with 90 degrees. 90 degrees minus 35 is gonna make 55 degrees. It allows us to change from one trig function to another, but does require us to modify the angle measure. Uh, our next trig function, sine, cosine, how about tangent? The tangent of 90 degrees minus whatever the given angle measure is equals tangent's co-function. Hmm? All right, so there are our primary three trig functions with their co-functions. Now let's look at the other three. Sine's reciprocal function is cosecant. The cosecant of 90 degrees minus a given angle measure is equal to cosecant's co-function is secant. Secant theta, there we go, not my best theta. Uh, cosine's reciprocal function is secant. of 90 degrees minus a given theta value is equal to its co-function, which is cosecant theta. And then tangent's reciprocal function is cotan, 90 degrees minus theta is equal to cotangent's co-function, which is tangent of theta. labor intensive, maybe a waste of time to write all that out and not just, you know, put a list of information up on the screen. But I think it's good for you to see those play out and see what the relationships are and kind of hear me repetitively and kind of jokingly and sarcastically, right? Tangents co-function is co-tangent. My hope is that that's going to help it stick for you when it comes time to take a quiz or a test and you get a question like this one that says, find a co-function identity, <clears throat> excuse me, with the same value as the cosecant of 35 degrees. And you might think, co-functions, I remember that phrase, but I don't know what cosecant's co-function is. Oh yeah, I can hear Newback saying it. Cosecant's co-function is just secant but it's the secant of 90 degrees minus the given angle measure. 
So it's equal to the secant of 55 degrees. We don't even have to solve it. We're just trying to come up with an equivalent expression. If we, if we calculated these two things, the cosecant of 35 degrees or the secant of 55 degrees, we would get the same answer. It'd be an ugly decimal, but we would get the same answer. <clears throat> Tangent's co-function is cotangent. It's the cotangent of 90 degrees minus the given angle measure. I'm saying 90 degrees even though I'm writing pi over 2 to help remind you and get those two values to stick in your mind as being the same. It's just a different symbol for representing the same amount of rotation. 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. And now unfortunately we have to subtract fractions. I'm going to take my first fraction and multiply it by 7 over 7, which gives me 7 pi over 14. I'll take the second fraction and multiply it by 2 over 2, which gives me 2 pi over 14. Then I'll do the subtraction and get 5 pi over 14. And that is an equivalent expression. Cosines co-function, just sine, right? Take the word co out of it and you've got just sine left. And then you'll have to do some subtraction in there also. And that'll be good for you. You should try that. What's nice about this one is that you're going to get an answer and it's going to involve the sine function. And if you wanted to, you could put your calculator in radian mode, or you could put this calculator in radian mode and evaluate the cosine of 3 pi over 8 and the sine of whatever angle measure you get. And you could see if the two functions output the same answer. They should. So that'll be a way that you can check and see if you got the right answer. On page, page, on page 7, on page 7, we see the word applications, which of course is code for word problems, typically. And the very first thing that we're being asked to do here is to use a calculator to find the value of acute angle theta in radians rounded to three decimal places. And this is a topic that we're going to address at great length and in great depth later. So it's a little unusual that we're doing it now, but it'll be okay. In order to solve for theta in the first equation that we see here, we need to get rid of the sine function on the left-hand side of this statement. And you can not divide both sides by sine. That would be like dividing both sides of an equation by the square root symbol, which we never do. So somehow I need something that's going to counteract the sine function, that's going to cancel out the sine function or undo it, like squaring undoes or cancels out square rooting, or cubing undoes cube rooting. Is there another example? Not that I can think of. There are more. But the one that applies here is the inverse sine function. I'm going to, and I, I would like it if you would write it out this way, I'm going to take the inverse sine of the left hand side of the equation. And I will take the inverse sine. It looks like sine to the negative first power. It looks like that's what I'm writing. That is what I'm writing. But we're recycling the notation here. It does not say sine to the negative first power. If you read it, it says, if you read it correctly, it says inverse sine. Not reciprocal. Inverse. So we're taking the inverse sine also of 0 0.9499. All right. On the left-hand side of the equation, the inverse sine of the sine, those two things cancel out, leaving us just with theta. 
and on the right hand side of the equation we need to use our calculator to evaluate that. And what I'm going to do is make me larger so that you can see my calculator better. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to turn on my calculator and clear it a couple of times and then I'm going to type in the decimal 0 0.9499 0.9499 and then if you'll on your scientific calculator if you have this one above the sign button in green on my calculator it looks like it says sign to the negative one it's the inverse sign button well how do I access that that feature the first thing I have to do is hit my second button which is this green button over here in the top left corner and so let's hit that click and then I'm going to hit the sign button, click, and I get, what does that say, 71.786. That's great. Is that the correct answer to this question? It's not. Why not? Because the question asks us to find the value in radians. And I left my calculator in degree mode. So this is the correct answer in degrees. If you got 71.786, that's correct. Now let's redo the problem, but let's do it in radian mode. So hit that DRG button up here once and confirm on the screen. It does say rad, so I'm in radian mode. And then I can type in the 0.9499 again, hit the second button, hit the sign button. And now I've got 1.2529 which if we round it to three decimal places, maybe I'll even turn this equal sign into a squiggly equal sign to indicate that this is an approximation. 1.253 if we're rounding it to three places because the nine in the fourth place causes us to round up. Close that up, there we go, 1.253. Oh, you can't see it, it's hiding behind me. Smaller, I don't wanna see that much of me. There we go, now I'm like a postage stamp. It works the same way with the inverse tangent button. You could type in 0.5117, hit the second button, and then hit inverse tan. On your graphing calculator, you're gonna be typing this in uh, just in a line. Uh, you can you can type it in from left to right. So I would hit the there's a second button in the top left corner of your grapher. So you can hit that. Then hit the sign button. Whoop, there it is. And on the screen I actually see sign to the negative first power appear there. Then I can type in the 0.5117. Close your parentheses. Don't close your parentheses. Doesn't matter. Hit enter and this calculator was still in degree mode. So I have to change the mode, hit the mode button, go down to radian, hit enter, second, quit, and then hit, if you hit second, enter, hit the second button and then hit the enter button on the bottom right corner, it will recall the last thing that you had typed in. So I see the sign inverse of 0.5117 again, I hit enter, and this time I got 0.5371. So rounded, that would be 0.537. Hopefully that's what you got on your calculator also. For my students, please make sure that you know how to do that on a scientific calculator because you may find yourself in a quiz or test situation where you are not allowed to use a grapher and you'll be presented with a question where you have to apply an inverse trig function. And then the real application problem when we start uh, happens when we start talking about, for example, problems that involve angles of elevation or depression. Elevation is going up, depression is going down, or looking down. And we'll work one of these two example problems. The Washington Monument is 555 feet tall. I don't think it's really 550 feet high. That would be like floating off the ground, wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, nice that we're provided with a diagram. If you stand a quarter of a mile away, or 1,320 feet from the base of the monument, look to the top, find the angle of elevation to the nearest degree. Great. So in the diagram, it's very clear that we're trying to find theta. 
and there are two known side lengths. Where are those side lengths? I've asked you a question like that before. Where, with respect to the angle, are the side lengths? The 555 feet, is that your hypotenuse, your opposite, or your adjacent? The correct answer is it's your opposite side. And what about the 1320? It's your adjacent side. It's next to your angle, but it's not the hypotenuse, so it must be the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, what trig function utilizes the opposite and adjacent side lengths of a right triangle? The answer is the tangent function. So let's write up the skeleton. The tangent of an angle measure is equal to the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. In this problem, I don't know what theta is, so I'm gonna write tan theta again. And this time I'll fill in my side lengths. The opposite is the 555. The adjacent is the 1320. And now I need to solve for theta in degrees. So I'm going back to my scientific calculator this time. I'm hitting the DRG button uh, a couple of times. Well, well, anyway, keep hitting that DRG button until it says degree on the screen or DEG. And now, one more thing that I want to write up into my notes so that it's there for my reference later is I want to take the inverse tan of both sides. This time, let's, um, I'm just going to write it like this. Theta equals inverse tan of 555 over 1320. If you want to put in an additional note that says maybe take the inverse tan of both sides of the equation. Fine, you could do that. If you want to take this and rewrite it down here and put the inverse tan in front of both sides of the left and right hand side of the equation like we did in the previous problem, great idea, you could do that. But in this case, and honestly, if I were just doing this for myself, I would put a little note over here that says tan inverse because that's what I did to both sides of my equation in order to get to the next line of my work. And I will do this very frequently, just put these little notes in the right-hand margin. All right, let's get into the calculator. On the scientific calculator, with the green buttons, I'm gonna type 555 divided by 1320 equals, and I've got a lousy looking decimal on there. Well, it's not actually all that bad. 0.420, It's a repeating decimal, which means that this decimal could be expressed as a fraction. It was sort of born from a fraction, 555 over 1320. Anyway, now we need to take the inverse tan, so I'm gonna hit the second button and then the tangent button, and I got 22.80 degrees. And we're supposed to be finding the angle of elevation to the nearest degree, so let's round up to 23 degrees. I'm gonna write theta squiggly equals for approximately equals 23 degrees. And then you could put a box around that if you like. If you're handing in work to me, I like a box around a final answer. It makes it very clear to me that you are presenting me with a final answer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our notes and the end of our conversation about right triangle trigonometry, although we're gonna keep applying these trig functions to triangles, and you need to go do some practice for your speed quiz. So you go, you go do that, and uh, I'm gonna make sure I've got my act together from the class that I'm teaching tomorrow. Thanks for hanging with me. See you again soon.